Hello to everybody and welcome to Let's Talk About God. Hello. We welcome everyone, Kim, Daniel, and JD, uh, Louie, and uh, Rod, good to see you guys. And Karen, thank you for joining us for the first time. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, listen, so I'll get into our introduction now. Um, look, the purpose of uh, our talks are to share Bible verses uh, that lead us to an intelligent faith in Christ's life, um, his, his character, and his mission to earth, um, and his death and resurrection that uh, we may know him and that we may render an intelligent choice on which side we choose in the great controversy between Christ and Satan. Um, we believe in the, what Paul wrote in Romans uh, chapter 14 and verse five, where he says, let every, every person be convinced in their own mind or let every person be persuaded in their own mind. We're not here trying to convince anyone to believe what we believe or to follow what we follow or anything of that nature. Uh, we just present Bible verses with obviously experiences and some maybe stories uh, from the Bible. Uh, and it's up to you and the Holy Spirit to let you know what is true and what is not, um, or which way to go or which way not to go. And so I hope everyone can appreciate that. And uh, also in these talks, we're going to be inviting you guys to join us in this, in this open forum uh, where we discuss a monthly topic broken down into our weekly talks, which include Bible verses with Bible questions and answers. We, obviously, we try to uh, stick to a time period, which is about 45 to 50 minutes. If we do linger into the hour uh, time limit and you have somewhere to be or go, by all means, just uh, 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 sign out and uh, hopefully we will see you and you enjoyed your uh, the later time and that you've enjoyed the time you spent with us. Um, so this monthly talk is, uh, this is talk number one and, and week number one, the 144,000, the heavenly class. Um, and uh, the talk for week one is titled, Who Are the 144,000? Now, it is important that you understand that we are not identifying the 144,000 as a group of people or a specific denomination, but we are identifying them by the Bible uh, makeup of their character. And mm. I think that that is important to understand. I'm not trying mm. to point anybody out or any group as uh, specific to the 144,000. I believe that that is something that God knows and uh, we will leave it in his hands. Mm. Um, lastly, um, this is a very open forum and uh, there may be plenty or many of uh, different points of views and, and, uh, and understanding from topic to topic and even from Bible verse to Bible verse, but we, we must all remember to respect each other's views, including the views of other denominations or, um, and, um, or others who have a different character makeup. All right, I think that's a fair comment and I think that shouldn't be too hard to abide by. Um, we will try to stick very close to this topic, which is the who are the 144,000 um, if you do have other questions that may pop in your mind or arise during this talk that have nothing to do with the topic, if you would like to send that to us at let's talk about God, um, let's talk about God three at gmail.com, or you'd like to send us a message on Facebook at let's talk about God, we'd be happy to correspond with you and even um, connect with you um, on an audio or a, a private Zoom session. Um, and with that being said, this time we're gonna have a, uh, a different uh, format for our prayer. We're gonna actually invite one of you to pray. And uh, we actually had a person who put their hand up before we actually started. So Daniel, can you lead us in prayer, please? Sure, Sean, thank you, brother. All right, let's bow our heads together, please. Our Father in heaven, it's, uh, it's always a privilege for a child to hear from their father. And uh, so we want to thank you that you call us your children. And uh, the number one evidence that we are your children is that we are attentive to what you say and uh, that our lives are changed by choosing to receive your words. Amen. And uh, I want to thank you that Jesus is your living word. And today we are going to be given the opportunity to see how his life is granted to each one of us and can be reproduced in us. And uh, it's your promise that 
what you've begun, you will also finish in each one of us. So thank you for the, the places in our lives that we're all now found and uh, that we're Amen. continuing to move forward by the faith of your son, Jesus, by trusting and believing everything that you say. So may the Holy Amen. Spirit have his work fulfilled in our lives. As Amen. we hear your word today, we believe and receive it in Jesus' name. And for his faith, we thank you. Amen. 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 That was that was that awesome. Thank you for that, Daniel. Amen. Appreciate that prayer. And um, so the next stage of uh, of our talk is that we've opened it up also for um, our, our guests to be able to read some of the Bible verses. So for our first Bible verse, which is Revelation chapter seven, um, I think that's going to be JD's going to read that, and then our second Bible verse, which is Revelation fourteen one through five. Okay. I think that Kim will read that. So I will, and they will be reading from the Good News translation. So I'll leave that to Kim and JD. All right. JD, he is going to read Revelation 7 1. One, one through uh, eight. The one through eight. Yeah, that's it. After this, I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth. Can everybody hear me? Yes. yes. Yep. Holding back the four winds so that no wind should blow on the earth or the sea or against any tree. And I saw another angel coming up from the east with the seal of the living God. He called out in a loud voice to the four angels to whom God had given the power to damage the earth and the sea. The angel said, do not harm the earth, the sea or the trees until we mark the servants of God with a seal on their foreheads. And I was told that the number of those who were marked with God's seal in their foreheads was 144,000. They were from the 12 tribes of Israel. Mm. Now we get down to five to eight. The 12,000 from each tribe, Judan, Reuben, Gad, Asher, Naphtali, Manasseh, Simeon, Levi, Issachar, Zebulun, Joseph, Benjamin. That's the end of it. Amen. Amen. It was, oh, well, the first one was, was Judah. I thought I said Judah. Oh, okay, sorry about that. That's all right. We knew, we knew what you were saying. <laughs> That's good. I'm glad you did. Now, <laughs> Uh, Revelation 14, verses 1 through 5, from the Good News Translation. Then I looked, and there was the Lamb standing on Mount Zion. With him were 144,000 people who had his name and his Father's name written on their foreheads. And I heard a voice from heaven that sounded like a roaring waterfall, like a loud peal of thunder. It sounded like the music made by musicians playing their harps. The 144,000 people stood before the throne, the four living creatures and the elders. They were singing a new song, which only they could learn. Of the whole human race, they are the only ones who have been redeemed. They are the men who have kept themselves pure by not having sexual relations with women. They are virgins. They follow the lamb wherever he goes. They have been redeemed from the rest of the human race and are the first ones to be offered to God and to the lamb. They have never been known to tell lies. They are faultless. Amen. Thank you, my sister. You're welcome. Yes, I'm just thinking um, if I have to explain uh, in detail about these two groups of verses. Mm -hmm. And uh, the same like uh, an example, like mm -hmm. the four angel holding 
back there for win. Mm. And uh, I can explain everything, but it will take a lot of times because we have to move on for 45 or 50, 55 minutes. But I'm just explaining this one little bit. Uh, the four win, you know what we're talking about, is about, uh, we call that strife, commotions, winds of war. And uh, you have a lot of Bible verses as well. Jeremiah 25, verses 31 to 33. Jeremiah 49, verses 36 to 37. Jeremiah 4, verses 11 to 13. Zechariah chapter 7, verse 14. But if anyone who listen to us, they want to have all the detail on those verses, they can write to us and we can respond back to them by the grace of God. Mm -hmm. But let me explain to you uh, briefly what's happening into these two group Bible we just read a few minutes ago. Uh, Revelation chapter seven, verse one to eight, teach this group are sealed while the angel are holding back the wind, the winds, which will hurt or arm the earth, sea, trees, etc. They are made up just before the seven last plague of Revelation chapter 16, verse 1 to 21, are pulled out. They all come in one day. It describes a very short time compared to uh, Isaiah 47, verse 9, or Revelation chapter 18, verse 8, one day, which in the Bible prophecy can mean a year. Armageddon, Armageddon is a sixth of the plague, mm. right? Revelation chapter 16, Verse 14, they are the spirit of demons that perform miracle. These free spirit, we will, we will talk about this in verse 16. These free spirit, in verse 16, we'll discuss that, uh, go out to all the king of the world to bring them together for the battle on the great day of Almighty God. Verse 15 said, listen, I am coming like a thief. That is Jesus Christ, you remember why he come, I don't want to go to this detail right now. Happy is he who is stay awake and God is clothed. That is, remain steadfast in faith and character and wholly loyal to God in uh, Matthew chapter 22, verse 11. So that he will not walk around naked and be ashamed in public. You imagine you have been invited in a Jewish wedding, the big feast, and it take a few days to do that. And uh, actually what I heard, they will prepare clothes for everybody. And now you have to wear their clothes. And now if you get to this, to this wedding, you not have a clothes, <laughs> you feel naked, that is very embarrassing. And that's what Jesus Christ tried to explain later on as well in his uh, talk. Um, uh, we should uh, make sure we have this clothes. And this clothes I think is represent our character as well. Now verses 16, which verse 14 we read, about the free, these free spirit. Then the, the spirits, in verse 14, we just read it before, brought the king together in the place that is that in Hebrew is called Armageddon. Satan's use in turn political and religious power to do his work. I'm sure you believe that. And now I try to explain this free spirit, which verse 14 talking about. Now, pagan Rome symbolized by the dragon. If you read in Revelation chapter 12, verse four to five, and then followed by a power uh, symbolized by the sea beast, 
Revelation chapter 12, verses 6, verse 15, Revelation chapter 13, verse 1 to 8, and also Revelation chapter 13, verse 3, receives a deadly wound like Jesus and then was restored to life. I think you get a clue what, where, where we're coming from. You know, Jesus get his wound and then he's come back to life. And then the mark of the beast, uh, the, the, sorry, the, the, sea, the sea beast, he, he is wounded and then come back to life. You know what I'm talking about. And finally, a power symbolized by the earth beast, by the earth beast. Revelation chapter 13, verse 11. And you know who that is as well. But anybody who want to know, we can uh, explain that to them as well. Now, the seven loss, the seven plague, and Jesus Christ return finish the battle of Armageddon. The 144,000 are made up of 12,000 from each of the 12 tribe of Israel. One hundred and forty-four thousand. The one hundred and forty-four thousand. That is those who refuse. Listen to that carefully. Those who refuse the mark of the beast. Revelation chapter fourteen, one to five, teach that the one hundred and forty-four thousand are with Christ before the throne, having been redeemed or bought from the earth. They are a faultless group. Re uh, e e Ephesians chapter 4 verse 30, and do not make God Holy Spirit sad, for this is for the Spirit is God's mark of ownership on you, a guarantee that the day will come when God will set you free. Uh, the 144,000 have, have been sealed by the Holy Spirit, by the Spirit of God itself. Verses 31 uh, said in, sorry? Being, yeah, I thought somebody talked to me. Yeah. Being sealed for a specific purpose. Amen. In this passage, the Holy Spirit is described has placing a mark or of ownership on God's true people. Now, my question is, what is the seal of God? We know that, we know now, the 144,000, that is those who refuse the mark of the beast. I repeat my question again now. What is the seal of God? Please, all is in your hand. Before you answer, before we answer that, I think we have to make clear that 144,000, like I've always um, been reading other people's um, messages saying that is not a literal number, like it's not 144,000 literally, but it would be like figuratively of a group of people that they're close with God and not necessarily 144,000. Um, lately, I've been having doubts about that. <laughs> I'm not so sure. Cause... So, so Rod, can I just interrupt you and just tell yeah? you our second talk is going It'll to be that. directly on It'll that. It'll be on that, yes. The, the, yes second exactly. talk, the second talk <laughs> is the 144,000 a literal number. Oh, okay, okay. I've yes. been yeah. jumping the gun here. Do you think next uh, week is the second talk then? Yes. Next week, okay. Yes. Wow. All right. Okay, there, is, oh, okay, but... there is so many we have we have to divide it for each week. All yes. Right. Coming the nineteenth of December, twenty twenty, three PM. Is that right? Be there. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Amen. Louis. Um, Continue, um, Lord. Oh, no, Louis. Sorry, uh, what's the what's the lady's name? I'm sorry. What's your Kim name? Kim or Kim. Karen? Kim. Um the lady no Kim. Um, I think, and for Rod, I think uh, uh, a prelude to that is uh, something you were reading, Karen, because you read 14, right? 
um, or was it 18 of Revelation? Revelation 14, 1 through, one through five? 5. Okay. Yeah. Um, otherwise, I don't think that you could possibly or any other woman could possibly make the 144,000 because it's men. It says it's men oh, who are defiled with women, right? Well, that, that has, I have no hope then. Thank you, Lou. That's right. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm truly becoming an Aussie because we work the sarcasm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, Louis, I see you, you You trying to get in front of us too, man. Hold on. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just putting it hey, out hey, there. Hey, hold on, man. Okay, okay. Hold on, horses. <laughs> Food for thought. So, so, James, you asked who, uh, what is the seal of God? Is yeah, that yeah that's right. Question? All right. Um, well, I, I understand from what we've read, we've, we've heard who seals the people with the seal of God. Um, but, and, and you all can correct me if I'm way off on my understanding. I um, read from a different version, uh, maybe I normally do, from the King James Version. And it states in Revelation 14, 1 through 5, that the, the 144,000 have the Father's name in their foreheads, mm -hmm. whereas Revelation 7 said just seal them in their foreheads, but it didn't say what it was. So in Revelation 14, there's a different uh, bit of information which shows what actually is written in the foreheads, mm -hmm. and that is the Father's mm -hmm. name. And you guys might know, like, like um, I've learned a lot, I have children, I have twin daughters, and they look very much like uh, their dad, the South African, you know, they, they resemble their father, um, or even people say they resemble me. So often a child, we know by birth, you know, when they grow up, they, they tend to have similar characteristics or tendencies or features like their, their parents. And from what I'm understanding from the scriptures, is this 144,000, they actually, they're children of God, of the Father's name is, is they're his by, he owns them and they've been purchased back, but they actually, from what I understand is they resemble or reflect their father, their, their, their first fruits, so they're born again, they're not born from flesh and blood like the first time, they've actually been born again um, in their minds, if you like. And God is the one that has all um, authority, if you like, willing, like they've given their lives to him willingly. They follow the lamb, which is yeah, God's yeah. gift to them to redeem them, being his son, Jesus, wherever he goes. So they really have, are in a trusting relationship as a child to their father or child to their parent. And they are following wherever um, the oh, lamb, which is the lamb of God, we learn is, is Jesus, um, wherever he goes, just like he followed his father in instruction, in, um, in duty, in, uh, yeah, he was, a, he was an express image, the reflection of his father when he was here. And I believe that the 144,000 by the same spirit of God that Jesus had reflect their father as well. And uh, they belong to him. And how they can come through the Battle of Armageddon, through all this that um, is chaos and everything happening on the earth, um, they actually are a stark illustration of what God is like compared to what, what the rest of, uh, what this, um, this king, you know, a, a guess of, of Armageddon and the one who brings them all, uh, they're very different put it that way they're very different than the rest of the people that are inhabiting the earth mm. did that make sense i hope i didn't stumble through that but yes thank you kim for your answer and and also what come to my mind when you mentioned we have to be born again that means with god family there is no grandfather grandmother granddaughter we all children of god Mm. Yeah. Because then, when we're born again, we all become yeah. children of God. Your daughter and you become the children of God as well. Uh, there's no mother like for uh, children. All become children of God. A wonderful family. <laughs> yeah. And you know, the beautiful thing is, I think Louis was right, like saying they're all men. Well, 
um, there's a Bible writer in the New Testament by the name of Paul who went through this conversion and he actually said in Christ there's no male or female. Amen. You know, and, and he's, so, just, he's just joking with you. <laughs> yeah, I know he was, I know, and I'm going along with it. Yeah. It's true, if you take that part literally, yeah. then where does to say that we stop, you know? Yeah, exactly. um, and I think when we get to the book of Revelation, it is so packed with symbolism from the entire Bible that mm. we can't just focus on that without exploring, as mm. we do, all these other scriptures. So that by the time we've come to Revelation, there's a maturing that God's given us in our understanding. Absolutely. You know, so that we cannot, we don't have to be without hope. It's pregnant with hope. Mm. You know, <laughs> and so they're new creatures. They're absolutely new creatures. I remember that. Um, you might remember it too, that Jesus asked the disciples, who do people say that I, the son of man, are? This yeah. is in you know, Matthew 16. And they said, oh, some say Jeremiah, others say Elijah or one of the prophets. And Jesus said to the disciples, who do you say I am? And Peter said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said, blessed are you, uh, Simon, son of Jonah. He says, I, uh, I say you're Peter. He says, but... Flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my yeah. Father, which is in heaven. Yeah. Amen. So it's, it's not only the revelation of Jesus, a human being isn't capable of revealing who he is, only God, but also um, God's children, it's not possible to reproduce them humanly. Mm. Mm. Flesh and blood can't inherit the kingdom of God, I certainly can't give birth to saints. <laughs> I'm saying, right? It's only God. I'm only capable of giving birth to sinners. And that's, I'm publicly going out there and I love my children. <laughs> but I can only give what I've got. Yeah. I don't have divinity in me generally. I don't, it doesn't originate in me. Mm. And so Jesus said to Nicodemus, you know, you're a great teacher, but you don't know the first fundamental thing. And that is you must, you must be born again from above. Amen. <laughs> James, I have books down at my back. He oh, has yeah, those see bookshelves. Yes. I can see. I have a few books that it says that the seal of God is the Sabbath. And you might be familiar with that if you're um, familiar with SDA prophecies. Um, but I think if we live only the Sabbath as the seal of God. We're missing a big point here because I think the Sabbath points to a creator, right? It's mm. one of the commandments that it points to a creator. So that, that's part of them. And I think the 144,000 will have God, of course, as a creator and Sabbath will be part of their lives. But I don't think it will be the only, as you pointed out, there won't be the only you know, thing that they will have. It's mm. the relationship that you will have with God. And it will be the Ten Commandments in in the whole living in harmony with God's um, creation and law, design law. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I think uh, it's more just like the Sabbath. There will be people maybe that they don't understand uh, the Sabbath, but they will still acknowledge God as the creator and obey his law. And by then, I think by default, they will be kind of, um, you know, having the Sabbath as well in their hearts. Thank you for your answer. Mm. Yeah. Um, man, it's just been so, mm. a lot of stuff is coming in and I'm just trying to think of how I, I fit in on this. I, I, <clears throat> only thing I can do is kind of share a little bit about um, what I've studied during the week just to be prepared for today. And I guess uh, one of the things is, is that um, the Bible tells us that the winds, as we talked about, <clears throat> are let go. Uh, and then before the strife, the time of trouble comes and then comes, you know, the Jesus Christ comes and um, the 144 are, are going to, to be sealed uh, prior to all of that uh, to protect them from all the, as Kim said, the, the chaos and the, the um, disorder, I guess, of, uh, of earth. And I guess I can say of earth's creatures as well. Um, but um, one of the things that I, I, I think of when I think of 
um, the seal and even Rod mentions it as the Sabbath is a, um, uh, the seal of God. And the seal has the three things in there as the title, the territory, and the, um, what's the other one? Someone help me. The title, which is creative yeah. territory, which is heaven and earth. And then uh, his name and his name in there. So that's what I think Rod was kind of referring to as a seal, but the seal, when you talk about name, I think of when you say, when I think of seal, I think of name and I think of name, I equate that with character and things like that. So it basically is saying that um, the 144,000 have a special character uh, at the seal in the name of God or God's character uh, in their life. So, so to put it quite briefly so that we can uh, keep moving forward is just that the 144 reflect the character of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Sean. Well said, yeah. Yeah. Um, nobody else? Oh, well, I had something for that, but you can cut me off. No, uh, go just, ahead. Go, go, Kimmy. Just to um, back up, if you like, from scripture, back up what the statement that Sean was making. Um, if you remember when Jesus was had come to the Passover and um, Judas had gone out and, and received the money and, and it took the band of people there with him and they met him in the garden. Um, and, you know, some of the disciples, one in particular, wanted to defend Jesus. And so he cut off Malchus's ear and, you know, trying to prevent or protect Jesus a little bit like when Uzzah put his hand to the ark and tried to stop it from falling, you know, and Jesus said, um, basically let all these things, let this all happen. Otherwise, how will scripture be fulfilled? Well, that's quite a chaotic time that Jesus was going through. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, that's not a real peace, mung bean, happy, lovey time. <laughs> He's going through quite a battle, you know, a, 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 and, and people have become almost like beasts and stuff. And if we go to Isaiah 53 and look at, that from verse one, you're going to see in there actually a trait, a character trait mentioned in the Lamb of God, this prophecy of Jesus as the Lamb, but it's actually seen in the 144,000. And that's why I'm bringing it up because it's actually showing um, a reproduction of that very character of the Lamb of God mm. actually in these people. And so Isaiah 53 says from verse one, and I apologize, it's the King James version, but I can read in like that, everyday language. That's a good, to. that's a good version. <laughs> Who hath believed our report and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? So this news is quite incredible what they've got to, what he's got to share. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground, you know, not very appealing, I guess. He has no form nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there's no beauty that we should desire him. You know, quite unattractive to the everyday person. Verse three, he is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Now, that's quite a chaotic life when you think of that. Nobody wants to be rejected. We all want to be accepted. But this is very real, what this is saying of this person to come. And you might remember that an Ethiopian asked Philip, who is this talking about? You know, is this about the man that wrote this or someone else? And Philip explained to him it's about Jesus, the Christ. Verse 4, surely... He hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken and smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before, before her shearers is dumb, so he opens not his mouth. Like we have two sheep, they're ewes, 
And when they get shorn, they're not going, hey, yeah. do you mind? Ouch! Look, put that away and let me, you know, they're not, they're not kind of <laughs> counteracting the shearer. They're quiet. They just get shorn and he's done, you know, in a quiet time. And that's what they're saying. It's not dumb as in like insensible. He's silent. He's not opening his mouth in complaint through all this affliction. Verse eight, he was taken from prison and from judgment and who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living for the transgression of my people was he stricken and he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death because he had done no violence Neither was there any deceit, or that's the word guile, guile in yep. his yep. mouth. And you get that yet in Revelation 14. Pleased, yeah, yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. So God, the, his father, permitted this to happen for the salvation of everyone, and the character of God could be fully seen under times of duress and times of stress when you just have had enough, and it seems like there's nobody there and everyone's against you. He trusted fully, completely in everything his father had promised for, through the scriptures. And he comes through uncomplaining, yet accepting of everything that had come upon him. Mm. And it's truly everything. We, we're all testifying over here. All things work together for good to those who love the Lord and those who are called according to his purpose. And so what the, what the 144,000 are permitted to come through and I say permitted because God is all powerful yeah and the father here Jesus had said look I can call on these angels my father will give me all these angels you know don't live yeah. by the sword that's my interpretation you know but this is saying in verse 10 of Isaiah 53 it pleased the Lord to bruise him he's put him to grief when you shall make his soul an offering for sin he shall see his seed he shall prolong his days and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his, in his hand. He shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. And we're here, we're here today, we stand justified because of this one that had no guile in his mouth. He was, he was completely submissive to God and trusting. The faith of Jesus is incredible. He trusted everything his father taught him from the scriptures. Amen. And I believe that that's the same walk that, and character of life that the 144,000 yeah. will have. Yeah. And, and, and come, through, well, to, come through that time oh. of trouble. So hey, can I, just say, can I, I just wanted to comment on Kim's thing. Um, you know, well, Jesus is the head, isn't he? And the the church is the body so the 144,000 represent that body mm. so Jesus has got to be the head of that you know yeah Amen. thank you my sister now sister Kim when you just read from the Old Testament and I can just see how all those scriptures have been fulfilled in the New Testament with Jesus Christ and this is supposed to be his family and those one who keep the, the Ten Commandments who keeps the Sabbath, they, they are the one who put him on the cross. Yeah, exactly. And, and I hope we not keep doing that before Jesus Christ is coming. Amen. Right? Mm. But let me share that with you. In Revelation, according, I just repeat my question. What is the seal of God? Now, Revelation chapter 6 bring us right up to the great day of God wrath and ask this question. Who shall be able to stand. Yeah. Revelation chapter 6, verse 17. What is God worth, first of all? God worth is, is turning, God turning away in loving disappointment from those who do not want him anyway. Mm. Paul is not afraid to discuss the worth of God in Romans chapter 1, there is a lot of place I can go on to that. Romans chapter 1, verse 18, 24, 26, 28. Even chapter, Romans chapter 4, verse 25, the worth of God was on Jesus Christ. We have to understand what the worth of God is. I'm just repeat, I'm just share that with all of us. 
But Revelation chapter 7 answers this question of Revelation chapter 6, verse 17, by pointing to a company of people who in the very last moment of time receive God protecting Mark, the seal of the living God, and are thus enabled to stand and harm in the day of his wrath. God was, is turning away in loving disappointment from those who do not want him. Now, you remember this four angel holding the, 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 the wings like the war? Yeah. And one angel, is maybe sound like Jesus Christ himself said, stop, let me mark my people, let me seal my people. And he gave us this protection. When he put this protection on them, the, the, the angel of, um, what do you call this? The angel, would, the destroyer angel, not allowed to touch his children. Yeah. The same like in the times of the first born in Egypt. They're not allowed to touch them. They have been safe completely with God. Hallelujah for that. You yeah. Know? <laughs> yeah. Now, do you understand now what it means, the seal of God, little mm. bit? If, also, I just want to add to you a little bit. If, if anyone wants to know about the destroyer and who that is, read in Revelation or chapter nine, and it goes into explanation of that. And I think it's like verse one and then like a verse 11, but read the entire chapter so that you get the, the full context of it and the understanding, but it'll, it'll identify who the, uh, who the destroyer is. And the four angel, they are the destroyer angel as well, because God is stopping them. They're not allowed to do it until God seals them. If you read in the, in the Bible, you will see it. If you can't see it, you talk to me or, will, or Sean, we will share it with you. Now, my second question, how shall we identify this protecting seal? Now, that is that's a good question. I try not to go too far uh, <laughs> on my last answer. And I was glad that um, I thought Kimmy was going to actually get it when she went to the Old Testament, but she went to a different book in Isaiah. Yeah, I'll go there, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but I, I just, in, in order to identify that, that seal, that protecting seal, which we've identified as God's name, God's character, I think you have to look at Isaiah 33 and verse 15 and then Psalms 15, one through five. And I've wrote some stuff down here in correspondence to that. And let me put some glasses on so I can see it because it's a bit smaller. But it says in Psalms 15, verses one through five, this group is mentioned not by number. And that's why I'm, I'm trying not to get everyone to focus so much on just on the 144,000, but it's their makeup, um, their character. So this group in Psalm 15 is identified by their characteristics. And when you read in Psalm 15, starting in verse one, and then we'll finish with verse five, it reads, um, and I forgot what translation I took, but I think it might be the King James Version. Um, apologies to anybody that's listening um, or anyone that's on, on the talk today. Um, but it reads in verse one, it reads, um, Lord, who may abide in your tabernacle? Similar to who might be able to stand, as James referenced in uh, Revelation chapter 6. Uh, but it says, who may abide in your holy hill? And verse 2, it says, he who walks. So this is how you start to identify that protecting seal or those who have been sealed by their characteristics. It says, he who walks uprightly and works righteousness and speaks the truth in his heart, which is opposite from lies and guile, uh, and speaks truth in his heart. And then that's where we can go back to, I think of Revelation chapter, um, was it seven or four, in 14, it talked about no guile, I think it was. Um, and, um, it, and, uh, and that refers back to, obviously, Revelation 14 goes to the number of the 144,000, but it's their character. Um, uh, which they have no lies or guile in their mouth or on their lips. And then he would continue reading uh, verse three. It says, he who does not backbite with his tongue. And we can all look at that and see what that means. Um, you know, talking about people. <laughs> or nor does evil to his neighbor, uh, nor does he take up a reproach against his friend, um, in whose eyes a vile person is despised. And um, he honors those who fear the Lord and who swears to his own hurt. 
Now, when you read that, it says swear to his own hurt. It doesn't mean you're going to um, do something against yourself and things like that. But what it's saying is that uh, I'll use a, a small example. If I made a business deal with Louis to pay Louis um, a dollar per drawing, because he's an artist that he's going to do. And then I turn around and I realize, oh, I should have charged a dollar 50. Then I, it, it, I don't go back to Louis and say, hey, Louis, I need to change it. I still, I suffer the loss because that's the agreement that I made. And I honor that agreement that I made with Louis. So that's what it's talking about. Um, who swears to his own hurt. You can read that in a couple of different translations and maybe it might be a little clearer for you. Uh, and, and it says he does not change. And then verse five says, he does not put his money out to usury. Usury is just interest. He doesn't charge interest if he loans somebody some money. And, uh, and it also says he doesn't take a bribe from the innocent. Now, those are some, uh, some very uh, interesting uh, characteristic marks about a particular group. And I will leave it up to uh, our listeners and also any of our viewers to be able to go and um, have a reference with that and compare that with the Bible verses we've been reading so far in Revelation 14 and Revelation chapter 7. Then also, also uh, in identifying the protecting seal, I want to go a little bit further or add a little bit more to what I just said and just say, there is, I don't want to say it's like an official, but there's a process or a preparation that takes place prior to, re to, to receiving that ceiling. And some of that is made known in Joel chapter two. Uh, in Joel chapter two, uh, I'll start off with verse 12, where it talks about that. Um, now, therefore, says the Lord, turn to me with all your heart, with fasting and weeping and with mourning. That's what the Lord is, is, is asking. So it says fasting and weeping. And it says now, uh, this is the time now that the Lord is saying, this is the time for us to examine ourselves. As they say in modern day language, it's a time for us to keep it real, keep it 100, you know what I mean, with ourselves. And, and, and what is our character reflecting as Christians, I'm going to say. Um, so I think that's what the Lord says. It's time for us to examine ourselves. And then I'm going to read verse 13. It says, so rend your heart, not your garment. And you read that in the New Testament when, um, when, um, when the, uh, the veil was rent and things like that, that the high priest would rent their, rent their garments after that in like disapproval or dissatisfaction or whatever. That was a garment. God said, not the garment. You read many times when some of the prophets have rent their garment uh, in mourning and things like that. Um, God has said, rent your heart uh, and not your garment. It says, return to the Lord your God. God's calling us back. This is the preparation for the sealing. God's calling us back. Come back to God. And it says, and it talks about God's characteristic in this one too. It says, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and, and of great kindness. And he relents to do harm. And then verse, four, verse 14 says, who knows if he will uh, turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him. And then it says uh, 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 in verse 13 or uh, 14, it still reads, a a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. And verse 15 says, blow the trumpet in Zion. Man, and then it says, consecrate a fast. Call a sacred assembly. Verse 16 says, gather the people. Gather the people together and sanctify the congregation. It, it doesn't, it, no one escapes this. It says, assemble the elders, gather the children and the nursing babes. And then it says, let the bridegroom go out from his chamber. And, and then it says, and the bride from our dressing room. Verse 17 speaks specifically to, this, to the priest, that the priests who minister to the Lord weep, weep uh, and, uh, re between the porch and the altar and let them say, spare you old people. And, and, it, and it goes on and says more. I'm just gonna conclude there because we wanna make sure everyone gets a chance to speak. But this is a time for us now to have self-reflection, a time for us to see how are we manifesting in our lives by the power of the Holy Spirit, the character of God, the ceiling of God, the name of God. And as we come closer to the end time, um, and I'm not prophesying anything, I'm nobody. I'm not saying that. I'm just, no one knows that day, hour, and time. But I'm saying by pure mathematics or lapse of time, when the 24 hours passes, we're closer to the end of time. Okay? So I'm just saying, as we get closer there, are we more reflecting Christ's character? When Moses came off the mount, it says, the people could not stand around him because of the bright glow that was on him, the reflection of Christ's character in his life. So I'm saying, are we too showing that? And that's what I believe. And, 
and the identify the identifying marks about to answer James's question, how do we, how, how shall we identify the protecting seal? That's it. Are we manifesting the character as was manifested to us through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? Amen. Thank you, Sean. Amen. Uh, and we remember Moses really wasn't aware. He didn't know his face was shining. Exactly. <laughs> and so I, so I was like, I can say, well, Sean, hey, dude, you got yeah. the sick, brother. Like, <laughs> I can't. Uh, angels obviously identify it, holy angels. Um, and we can't. And I wanted to add, if I may. Um, you can. I believe that those that are sealed and its purpose, it's really the blessing from God. They're, they're those, according to scripture, we'll read it, that aren't running away from God because remember in Revelation 6, they want the mountains and the rocks to fall on them and hide them from the face of him that sits on the throne and from the lamb. But if you go to Psalm 24, it's actually adding to uh, Psalm 15. From verse 3, it says, Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Mm. This is Mount Zion, right, that we see. Or who shall stand in his holy place, this mountain? Mm. And it us, he that has clean hands yes. and a pure heart. Well, Amen. I can't. My own heart's deceitful above all things. It's desperately wicked. I don't know it, according to scripture. But God sees the heart. Yeah. And we look on the outside. So he can see that a pure heart has clean hands. There's no marks of any beast, if you like, on my hands. Because my heart is clean. And he that has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to vanity, nor sworn deceitfully, that is, he hasn't entered into an oath or made an oath with deceit or deception. And verse 5, look at this. He shall receive the blessing from the Lord. See, the wicked or those that choose not to allow God to preserve them for all eternity, the curse must come upon them. The curse that Jesus took, they rejected mm. him taking that, and the curse must be on them. And But God wants to bless us. He wants to give us the blessing. It says, so the seal, according to scripture, with this verse, if we marry it up, is equated with blessing. He shall receive the blessing from the Lord, and this is what it is, and righteousness from the God of his salvation. Amen. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek your face, O Jacob, Selah. Amen. So to seek the face of God, we know that Paul told us that God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God, which is when God, that's what Moses asked to see, the glory of God. Um, but it's sh shone in the face of Jesus Christ. And we've Amen. got this treasure in earthen vessels so that the excellency of the power would be of God, not of us. And so then it goes to talk about the tribulations and trials that those people go through, but they want to see God face to face as Moses did. Amen. Have that face to face, seeking the face of God, which Joel talked about. Mourning and calling a fast is really about mm. seeking God, putting him ever before them. Amen. 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 Does, does anyone else want to say anything or add anything? Um, I wanted to say that uh, I like the uh, chapter that Kim um, referred to in Isaiah 53. One of the yeah. things that I found that was really interesting uh, as she was reading along uh, was because uh, he had done no violence. Um, mm. Christ was not a violent person. And the beast is a beast because it is violent. Uh, so the character of the people who uh, I think during that time are going to have a character such that violence won't be their method of, of operation, that they won't be retaliatory. And we see a lot of that today in, in what's going on for people who even think that they're right and could be right about their attitude towards certain things that are going on in the world. But the methods that they use to um, express their displeasure and uh, to control others uh, violates the, uh, you know, love, truth, and freedom. And also, too, the, the seal of the people of God is, is contrasted by the mark of the beast. So if the beast is a violent character, then the seal of God must be a character that is opposite to that. Yeah. So there's yeah. contrast those two yeah, and in, 
Yeah, in Isaiah 53, it talks about how um, yet we esteemed him smitten, stricken, of, or stricken, smitten of God. Um, and when Kim was talking about the uh, people calling for the rocks to fall and everything like that, and they want to hide from God. Why do you want to hide from God? You know, and, and God is not doing anything. The angel said this same Jesus is going to come. And Jesus didn't go around hurting anybody or yeah. making people feel guilty. It's like Judas. I think Judas and Peter were a mini second coming. Um, either that the whole the whole last scenes of Jesus's life was like the the final ends of earth in my in my opinion. When Peter looked at Jesus, he wept, and Peter denied Jesus with cursing and swearing even much more than Judas did. I don't yeah. know if people see that, but I, I, that's what I think. I read that. Yes, and he went out and he wept. Judas looked at Jesus the same way. So did Jesus look at Judas differently? Or was it the same Jesus like the angel said he was going to come again? Yeah, amen. He looked at Jesus the, the same, same way. Mm -hmm. And Judas and Judas, uh, Judas looked at Jesus the same way. And he went out and he killed himself because he mm. couldn't stand the face yeah. of love and truth looking back at him. And yeah. so I think that the people of God are going to be a fasting type people but their fast is not mere subjection of body. Right. It's about putting away their will, fasting their will to do the will of the Father. Amen. That's the fast that God has chosen. Amen. You know, he says it even in, in Isaiah um, chapter, what is it, chapter 58. Uh, is this not a fast that I have chosen to loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke? To go out and preach the gospel, to mm. free people, you know, to not get caught up in the things that we get caught up, not because they're bad, but because our mission overrides that and is so important. And we have good news and we don't we want people to hear about it, Amen. but we have to get rid of those filters that are, are law based and violent based and um, retor retributive based thinking those things have to be fasted out of our lives so that we can then have a clear um, clear path towards spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ in this hope uh, uh, or in the Holy Spirit, the spirit of love and truth. So, Amen. Amen. So Amen. listen, so listen, everyone, we're getting short on time. So if there's no other small comments, we can let James answer his own question and then we'll do closing comments. And mm -hmm. for those who want to hang around for a few minutes after we stop recording, um, by all means, feel free so we can uh, converse a bit more. I'd just like to thank you uh, that you have answered the question by using the Bible, um, such as examples of uh, Psalms 15 and Isaiah 53. I think it's incredible that we ask these questions and the Bible is actually all there. You know? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> the answers are Amen. all there. You just have to look for it. Amen. Amen. Now, I just repeat my question again. How shall we identify this protecting seal? God need a people who really care about their relationship with Him and focus on the Bible study, prayer, and witness witnessing uh, that will be required to prepare them for the final showdown. These people, known as the 144,000, will be God's last marvelous messenger to the world. Mm. They will not be afraid to speak the truth to anyone. In fact, they will be expected to speak the truth to the whole world at a time when faith is almost non-existence here on earth. Yeah. Listen to Luke chapter 18, verse 8. Listen to what he said. I tell you, Jesus Christ himself, I think, said that. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man come, shall he find faith on the earth? Mm. Now, if you want to understand about the avenge, you read from verse 3 to verse 7. He make it very clear and simple and make you understand what kind of avenge it is. Now, 
this group of people will keep God commandment, I, as Rod said, as they were intended to be kept and bear testimony to God as did the apostle and prophet. Revelation chapter 12, verse 17. L listen to that, what Satan's not like very much. And the dragon was worth with the woman. The woman, you have two women in the, in the Bible. One, the pure woman, and the second one is uh, an, an pure. Now, the pure woman we know is the church of God, the church of Jesus Christ. Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 2, Isaiah 51, 16. Second Corinthians 11, verse 2. Ephesians 5, 22 to 35. I continue to what he said here. He said, and the dragon was worse with the woman, and he went to make war with the remnant of her seed, who kept the commandment of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Revelation chapter 19, verse 10 said, and I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do, uh, do it not. I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is a spirit of prophecy. As Lord said, the Bible answer itself, we not need to worry about this. Mm -hmm. Revelation chapter 22, verse 9. Then said he unto me, See that thou do it not, for I am, I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren the prophet, or and of them that keep the saying of this book, worship God. These verses, my brother and my sister, help us to understand what the testimony of Jesus involved. There will be a group living at the end of this earth history who will have among them prophet who speak the truth as inspired by God. Such a group of <coughs> people will naturally come together as suggested by the New English Bible translation of Ephesians chapter 4, verse 13, until, he said, until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, a mature person attending, attaining, sorry, attaining to the measure of Christ's fullness. We believe this group will be the 144,000. Thank you so much for all your answer. Was very beautiful. I love it. Wow! Yeah. What a what a what a very um, <clears throat> exciting topic, and what a very um, at the same time misunderstood topic. And uh, as I said from the beginning, one of the things we want to do, or one of the things we won't be doing, is trying to identify any specific groups or individuals that make up the one hundred forty-four thousand. But we would identify them by the Bible characteristics of that group. And uh, well done today uh, from everyone. Um, I really appreciate you um, taking your time to join us for these sessions and the, these talks. Um, right now, what I'd like to say is that our next talk um, for week number two, which will be next Saturday at 3 p.m. Uh, um, Eastern Standard Time uh, for Brisbane, uh, Queensland, will be um, is the 144,000 a literal number? So Rod, we'll get a chance to, to jump into that one um, for you. And listen, um, I'll make sure everyone gets sent the Bible verse um, that are chose for that and also do your own research as well. And let's close now um, with prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, uh, what, a, what a great uh, talk we, we've had in, in reference to your scripture and what it says about this particular group at the end time, just uh, before that comes through, I should say, Armageddon. We thank you so much for the Bible truth and uh, how it just uh, transcends all of our learned and cultural uh, behaviors. 
and that it could it would lead us in all truth. And I've heard it mentioned earlier today through James. I gave a Bible oh, reference to it that um, may you find faith uh, when you return. Lord, uh, as the, as the um, I think, I can't remember who it was in the New Testament. He says, Lord, um, um, Lord, um, what do you say? Lord, I, I believe, but help thou my unbelief. Mm. Lord, give us a stronger faith in you, a trust, a belief, a confidence in mm. every word that you have mm. revealed to us uh, in your holy word and by the life that was made manifest and through um, Jesus Christ. Bless all of us. Bless uh, my brother Hyper, who we missed today. Mm. And uh, we look forward to being reunited with him again soon. Mm. May you keep him and his family at these times. Yes. And bless the other um, uh, guests that normally join us, that they want here. May you be with them and may you keep them well. And bless anyone who wants to come on uh, in the future. Um, may they feel confident and free that they can speak and share mm. about you on this platform. Thank you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Okay. Give me.